All right, so uh, this morning we will be talking briefly about, uh, about prayer, and then you guys will continue to discuss this in your small groups. Okay, we will talk about prayer, and uh, we will see how the Bible defines prayer. Anybody here has an idea can define prayer? What is prayer? Right? What is prayer? Communication with God, right? Now, most of us, we know what it means. Now, what does it mean to communicate with God, right? So we hope to, to dive in deeper a little bit more. But, you know, I was uh, watching this, this uh, message by a, a famous pastor in the U.S., and he gave this illustration about prayer. Now, I would need a strong, abled volunteer. Strong, abled. Anybody who wants to volunteer? Anybody there? I, I see some very strong men right there. Sir, the one with the very big biceps in table nine. Can, can, come on. Can you uh, join us here? Can we encourage him? Palakpakan naman natin siya. All right. <laughs> can you join me up here on stage? Okay. Hi, what's your name? Louis. Louis. Omar. Hi, Louis. Let's stay here. Okay. So, Louis, the reason why you're here is we want to know your prayer request. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> okay. So, Louis, um, how how much do you <laughs> carry? Uh? I mean, bench press. Uh, you know, just nice, just nice and enough for my body weight. Nice and enough for your body weight. Have you ever tried 205 pounds? Yeah? So you can carry me. I just gave away my weight. 205. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trust you. Okay, I'm going to trust you with all my weight. So you will have to catch me. I haven't met you, but uh, I know I can. No, it's okay. It's okay. And, oh, I need both his hands. Or else, okay. So, um, uh, Lu Louis, Louis, okay, Louis. I will fall down with all my weight. Ah, you catch me? Promise, ah? Okay. May anak ako? Oh, that's good. Okay. All right. Can we pray first? Oh, can we pray first? Wow, ah? Very good. Okay, you're you're exempted from this class. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. So, ready na? Ah? Okay, okay, okay. Alright, thank you so much, Louis. Now, what was that uh, illustration about? You know, sometimes we live our Christian lives depending on ourselves, right? And if Louis would represent God, a lot of times you and I, we live our lives not fully depending on God. You see, prayer, prayer is a manifestation or an evidence of our full trust in God. Now, a lot of times, a lot of times, I don't know about you, but some, a lot of times me, you know, sometimes if I put my full weight, sometimes meron akong konting support sa sarili ko. Right? And I, it's, it's like I'm saying, maybe God cannot carry my whole weight. Maybe God cannot. So I, I, I need to, to depend on myself somehow. Right? I'm not saying na, na just don't do anything, let God do everything. We have a participation in, 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 in our lives as we respond to God. But a lot of times, we don't depend on God by not praying, by not coming up to Him in prayer. And that's why we live our lives. Sometimes, you know, we fall back, but maybe some of you, if you try that, your, your, your sides are clenched, your muscles are clenched, right? And you have this, and, and we're living lives stressed. Problematic still. Oh, dependent naman ako kay God. I'm dependent on God. But there's this clinched body part that we're trying to exert. That's why we don't live uh, uh, lives that are worry-free. We always worry. We're always stressed. But prayer demonstrates our dependence on God. So that's what we're going to talk about. Two parts. First, we will talk about biblical truths about prayer. And then later on, we will see some instructions about prayer. So the first is this, biblical truths about prayer. Prayer is personal communication with God. 
It is personal. It is talking to somebody that um, that you are close with. Not just anybody, but it's a personal communication with God. You know, before, people, people didn't feel that they have the right to go directly to God. Right? People didn't feel that they could just access God directly. But when Jesus came, Jesus changed all that. We now have direct access to God through the work of through his work on the cross. You know, I have I have friends who would ask me, "Can you Omar, pagdasal mo naman ako, can you pray for me? Do you have people who come to you and and tell you that, "Can can you pray for me?" Now, there's nothing wrong with people asking for prayers because we're commanded to pray for one another, right? But there are people who come to us and ask for prayers, why? Ano sasabihin nila? Sige na Omar, pag-pray, pag-pray mo na, pag-pray mo ako. Why? Because mas malakas ka kay God. Diba? Especially if they find out that I work in CCF. They say, Omar, sige na ikaw mag-pray kasi mas malakas ka eh. Or maybe in family gatherings, right? If they know you attend CCF or you're part of a big group, oh, sige na ikaw na mag-pray. And they feel like they themselves cannot access God. But prayer is a personal communication with God, right? We can access God through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Now, as in all communication, is communication one way or two way? It's two way, right? One is us talking and then the other party talking and we are listening. So prayer is not just about us talking but us listening to God as well. Okay? Matthew 6, 9 says, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So here, Jesus Christ emphasizes how we are to have this uh, relationship, intimate communication with God. Our Father. So it's a communication, a personal communication with God. But the psalmist says also in verse in chapter 81, if my people would but listen to me, God talking, if Israel would follow my ways. And what was happening during this time? You know, the Israelites before they would um, they would always cry out to God, God help us, help us. All the time they would cry out and God would deliver them. But when they don't have trouble in their lives, they forget about God. Sounds familiar? Yeah? A lot of times, you know, when, 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 when things are going smoothly, we, we, uh, we forget about God. And the only time we cry out to God is when we have problems. Now, prayer is not only about asking God for things, but also listening to Him. And here, the psalmist reflects the desire of God, if my people would but listen to me, God would always would always um, deliver them from their troubles, but, but they would not obey God's word or instructions to them. It's listening. How do you know when somebody listened? How do you know when somebody listened to you? Right? When you say something, you, maybe you tell your children, oh, Anaka, you do this. How do you know that, that, that your child listened? If they obeyed, right? If they obeyed. And so when we come to God in prayer and when we listen to Him, then the proof or manifestation of us really having listened to God is when we apply what we have heard from Him. We need to listen. How does God speak to us? Okay, I'm listening, we're listening, but how does God speak to us? Through His Word. You know, somebody said the Christian life is dependent on two things. It is the Word of God and prayer. The Word of God and prayer. Of course, our salvation is anchored in Jesus Christ, but our, our Christian life, the way we, we're going to live our life, is, it's dependent on the Word of God and prayer. And we cannot do one without the other. It's like two wings of a plane. Both has to be existent. And when we listen to God, we need to know God's Word. Because God speaks to us through his word, right? 
And so when we pray, how do you know if, if you're hearing from God? You know, a lot of people would say, oh yeah, you know, God told me to do this. How do you know God told you to do that? You see, God will never contradict himself in his word. Now, some people would say, oh, you know what? God told me to just, to just leave my parents. And, you know, they're asking, me, me, they're asking me to do something unreasonable, right? They're asking me to do something unreasonable, so I'm just going to leave and never see them again. Well, what, what did God say in his word? Honor your father and your mother. Now, unless that your parents are asking you to sin against God, then that's a different thing. But sometimes we're, we're claiming, sometimes people are claiming, you know, I heard from God. You know, I heard from God that I'm supposed to marry this girl. Is it true? What does God have to say about it? Are we violating some principles in the word of God? So how would you know if God is speaking to you? How do you know that what you hear as, as, as you reflect, as you pray, is accurate? You have to know what the Bible says. And so... As we communicate with God, we need to listen and we have to know God's word. Now, next point is prayer develops our intimate, personal relationship with God. Again, the psalmist says in Psalm 27, verse 8, My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, O Lord, I will seek. And again, in, in chapter 84, it says, My soul yearns even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. The psalmist is, is expressing desire to be closer with God. Do you want to be closer with God? Yeah? I hope so. Well, then you need to constantly pray. Intimacy does not happen overnight, right? Getting closer with people does not happen overnight. Now, if you think of, can you think of the of people close to you, best friends? Do, do you have like, do you have best best friends? How do you become close friends or best friends? Over time, right? Constant communication. You keep in touch always, right? Have you ever experienced like you have a good friend from from uh, from from grade school maybe, or high school, and then you see them, it's it's just not the same again. It's not the same anymore, right? Because of the gap of, of the lack of communication and you're trying to rebuild a friendship again, right? You know, um, just recently, my daughter, my, my uh, I have a daughter. I have a one-year-old, one and one-year-old and seven-month daughter, right? One and seven. And just recently, I, I attended the conference in the U.S. This is the first time that I left my daughter for 10 days. So I left her. And you know what my fear was? That when I come back, she won't recognize me anymore, right? That she wouldn't recognize me anymore. So I was so worried. You know, I told my wife, honey, always show, show my picture, okay? Show my picture, All right? So she won't forget me. And thank, uh, thank God for technology. We now have uh, technology for FaceTime or Skype or, or WhatsApp where I could communicate and, and, and do video conference with my daughter. You see, communication is very important. And if we want to develop our intimate personal relationship with God, then we need to constantly pray and communicate with God. An another Bible truth is prayer shows our dependence upon God. Psalm 62 verse 8 says, Trust in him at all times, O people, Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. You know, when we are, we are in need, right? When we are in need, we turn to people whom we know can help us. And this is what the psalmist is saying. You can turn to God because God is our refuge. God is our refuge. Prayer shows our dependence on God. You know, um, do you remember the story of, this, of the thieves on the cross when Jesus was crucified on the cross? Remember that story? When one, one of the thieves was saying, what was the thief saying? He was saying, you know, if you are really the Christ, save yourself and save us too, right? And then the other thief said what? Basically what he was saying, shut up. Stop talking, right? Stop talking. You know, we deserve to be here. 
but this man, Jesus doesn't deserve to be here. And then this person turned to Jesus and said, remember me when you go into your kingdom. And what did Jesus say? I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, the thief, the thief who said that, the thief who turned to Jesus, what was he saying? By communicating with Jesus, by turning to Jesus, what, what was he saying? I know you have the answer. I know I can depend on you. I know you are real. Because if I don't believe that, then I wouldn't have turned to you. But this thief turned to Jesus and said, well, basically what I'm saying is, I have faith that you will be able to bring me there. And so Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. And so when we turn to Jesus, when we turn to Jesus in prayer, turn to God in prayer, we are expressing our dependence on him. We are expressing our dependence on him. Prayer shows our dependence upon God. Next point, pray in faith. Pray in faith. James chapter 1, verse 68 says, But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think, that man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Matthew 12, 21, verse 22 says, If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. We need faith in prayer. It's the same idea of having dependence on God. We need prayer. We need, we need faith in prayer. Uh, the Bible defines faith as what? What is faith? Faith is the confidence in what we hope for and an assurance about what we do not see. Again, when we pray in faith, especially about the things that we do not know, we are expressing dependence on God, right? And it's ironic if we do not have faith because the mere act of prayer is saying, I, I can't do it. I need you. And so why even ask God or ask God for something and not even believe in him or the things that he could do? You know, when, when um, I was a, a young Christian, I, was, I, I had some problems with finances. When I was in college, I, I got into a business and it didn't turn out well, and so I was in debt. I was in debt. And so I asked my mother, I said, Mom, can you help me get a loan? And so my mom helped me get a loan, right? And then I was able to cover, uh, to cover my debt. Uh, I was able to cover the expenses in that business. And then my mom, my mom asked me, uh, one night she said, uh, I was on my way to small group, to D group, right? I was on my way to small group, and then my mom said before I left, Omar, by the way, um, we need to pay your debt. And I'm like, oh, sure, when? Tomorrow. Nice, mom. <laughs> nice timing, as in tomorrow. It's already evening, and so I was so worried. But you know what? All this time, I was actually sharing this problem with my small group. I was sharing this problem with my small group. And so when I, when I got to small group, my, I was having accountability. I was talking to a friend of mine, and I was telling him my problems. I was telling him, you know what? I have a big problem. I have this loan to pay the next day, and, 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 and I don't know where I'm going to get the money. And you know what he said? He said, relax ka lang. God loves you. And I told him, I know God loves me, but I need money. You know, and, and, and really, I didn't have faith at that time. You know, and I, and I kept on repeating my problem and, 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 and my, my, my issues, and he just kept on reassuring me and telling me, Omar, it's going to be okay. God loves you. And so in the middle of our meeting, I stood up and excused myself, trying to think of what I'm going to do. And so I stood up and... Uh, uh, went for the door. I said goodbye to everyone. And before I got to the door, my friend ran, uh, ran from across the room and then shoved a box to my chest from behind. He shoved a box to my chest and said, Omar, from the Lord. I said, where's the Lord? And I said, Omar, from the Lord. I'm like, thank you. And I was embarrassed to open the box. And so I got in the car. I drove and, you know, my curiosity got the best of me. 
five minutes driving, I pulled over, I opened the box, and there I saw collections of cash and checks. And little did I know that all this time when I was sharing with them my problems, they had compassion and they started passing the hat. And so the money in that, in that box um, uh, allowed me to pay my debt and, and, and then some, some expenses. Now, I'm not telling you this so that you can join a D group <laughs> and ask for money. I'm not, please. I hope we are clear on that. But what I'm saying is the heart of man a lot of times is lacks, lacks faith in God. Yeah, I know God loves me, but I don't have money or I need this. I, but, but what? I know God loves me. That should be enough. And so when we pray, our whole heart should be saying, hey, God, I'm praying to you because I know you're God and I'm not and that you can help me. Now, if we ask in prayer, does it mean that we automatically get what we ask for? Well, not really. Because we have to pray according to God's will. First John chapter 5, verse 14 says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. We cannot just pray and expect to get everything we prayed for. It has to be according to His will. And again, how do we know His will? We read God's Word, right? Anything according to His will. You know, I, I'll be uh, sharing a lot about my daughter because, you know, I'm a new father and I'm now understanding how God is as a father to us, right? And, you know, my daughter would always ask, about a, lo ask a lot of things. Always ask a lot of things, all right? Um, she would ask for the scissors. She would ask for the dirty slippers. She would ask for, for things on the floor. Do I give her everything? No, because as a parent, I know what's good for her. So it doesn't mean that everything we ask from God, we will receive. Because God knows what's best for us. And if it's not for good for us, even if we think it is, then we won't have it. Right? God knows what's best. God is sovereign. Bible says, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. We got to trust the Lord. Sometimes we think this option or this thing is good for us, but God's wisdom is higher. And God knows what is best for us at any given time. So pray according to God's will. And then Jesus modeled a lifestyle of prayer. Luke chapter 5, verse 16 says, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. He would often do this. He would often do this. Jesus prayed so much that when Judas betrayed him, he knew where to find Jesus. It was so predictable of Jesus where he was going to be of him praying, of where, of what time. And Judas knew where to find him. Jesus prayed so much that when it was time for Judas to betray him, betray him, Judas knew where to find him. Our goal in our Christian lives is to be like Christ in all things by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus demonstrated and gave us an example of the need for prayer. Before he started his ministry, before he did anything, he always prayed. Especially when he was about to, 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 to suffer on the cross, he prayed. We need to pray. So these are some Bible truths about prayer. Now we go to the instructions on how to pray. So he, he, these are some important points about prayer. Now, how do we pray? Instructions on prayer. Now, the disciples went with Jesus everywhere, 
right? And they witnessed Jesus do a lot of things. You know, Jesus, Jesus uh, doing miracles left and right, healing the sick, raising the dead, calming the storm. Jesus did all of these things. But it's amazing how the disciples asked Jesus this thing. They said, Jesus, teach us to pray. They didn't say, Jesus, teach us to calm the storm. Or Jesus, teach us to raise the dead. Jesus, teach us to, to heal the sick. No, Jesus, teach us how to pray. They must have observed how Jesus lived such a prayerful life. They, they must be thinking, they must be thinking, this is where Jesus gets his power. This is why Jesus, the way he is, because he's so prayerful. And so the disciples asked, Jesus, teach us to pray. And that's what we're going to look at and hopefully learn from. We're going to look at the prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples. Now, Jesus did not give them a prayer to pray. Jesus didn't say, uh, uh, disciples, pray this prayer. But he was saying, pray then like this. And so he was giving some, some guidelines on prayer. But first we look at this. Our first point is pray sincerely to God. Don't pray to impress people. Pray sincerely to God. Don't pray to impress people. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, it says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. Now, the focus here is not on where they prayed. It's not because they were in the public squares or in the synagogues or on the streets. That's not the point. The point of Jesus was do not be like the hypocrites. Do not be like them. Why? What were their actions? Well, they would go in the synagogues and, and on the corners of the streets and they would start praying. What was their motive? Their motive was standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. That was the motive. And that's what Jesus was, was preaching against. He was saying, no, it's not about whether you're in the synagogue or we're here and I, you know, I can't pray with you guys because we're in public, but it's more of the motive who was praying? The hypocrites. What made them hypocrites? Well, they would pray, but it was all for public show. Public show. Means and may pressure when we're asked to pray in public. Why? You know, sometimes we, we, we don't know what to say, right? You know, they, you know, I, I I don't know how to pray, you know, somebody would say, but it, it's just really conversing, a personal con conversation with God. But the hypocrites, God says. Jesus says, do not be like them, for they pray to be seen by men. And he says, I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. What Jesus was saying is this, well, you know what? The only thing they will get from doing that is their public praise. Oh, I'm going pray. Wow, you're so eloquent. Wow, that was powerful. And that's the only thing they will ever get. Their reward is in full. That's it. From that kind of prayer, that's the reward. But then he says, But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your, your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Now, again, it's not so much of where you are praying. But what happens when this is the setting, when no one sees you? That is when we are most real, right? Right? That's the time when, when you and I, that, that's when we are most authentic. Anybody here tried to fool himself? Right? <laughs> you know, it, it, we, we are most real when we are alone, when nobody sees us. Right? And so Jesus was saying, you know, this is, this is the attitude that I want you guys to have. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. We don't need to impress others when we're alone. There are no distractions when we're alone. There's no having to choose the right words to pray when we're alone. It's just bearing out our hearts. You know the song of uh, Gary V, Warrior is a Child? Remember that? You know, I, I, I don't sing. So, you know, he says, um, the chorus says, 
Uh, they don't know that I come running home when I fall down. They don't know who picks me up when no one is around. I drop my sword and cry for just a while because deep inside this armor, the warrior is a child. Because maybe outside, especially in church, people see, wow, this guy is strong, this guy is holy, this guy is mature. But, you know, when we're alone, we could just really be ourselves and say, God, you know, I, I really need help. I need you. So pray sincerely to God. Don't pray to impress people. Next is pray with sincere requests, not with meaningless word repetitions. Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 to 8. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And I love how, how Jesus is, is pointing out different sets of people so that they could really observe what these people are doing. And, and Jesus was saying, don't be like the pagans. They babble. They just keep on saying things repetitively. But it doesn't mean anything. How did pagans pray before? They would repeat the right words in the right order and thinking that, you know what? If I do this, then I will be heard. I will be heard. Now, sometimes you and I, we, we hear, we hear um, cliche prayers, right? And we try to copy it sometimes. Right? I don't know about you. What are some cliche? You know, I, I, well, you may, you may uh, sincerely pray that prayer, but you know, sometimes uh, people would say, uh, uh, "Bless the hands that prepared this food." Right? What does that mean? Somebody said, "Why just the hands? Why not the whole body?" Right? Bless the hands that prepared this food, and so, and that's a cliche. And we don't even. Some people would mean that, but sometimes. People just say it because it's a common prayer. You know, my daughter, she, uh, she's learning to speak. She's learning to speak. So when she wants something, she would point at it and she would say, na, 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 na. And then if, if we're not paying attention or, you know, we're, we're, we're not getting what she wants, she would even shout louder. Na, 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 na. And what we would say is, I would say is, baby, say please. And then she'd say, peace. And then we'll give it to her. If it's good for her, we'll give it to her. All she needed to do was say, please. But she wants to be heard. She, you know, so she would repeat, nah, nah, and she thinks that if she repeats it or if she speaks louder, then that makes it more effective. But we know what she needs, right? In the same way, it says, do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. God already knows what you need. You don't have to impress him with your words. We don't have to impress him with our words. Just say please. All right? Pray focusing on who God is to us. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven. And I love how he made it simple. Who, is, who are we praying to? Who are we talking to? First, our Father, and talks about our relationship with Him in heaven. And that means somebody that transcends this world beyond this world, not like anyone in this world, our Father in heaven. And that is saying we are talking to somebody that we can be intimate with, and yet He's so capable and able of, of great things. He's sovereign, He's powerful, all-knowing, and all-loving. This is the person who we're talking to. And if we know who we're talking to, then we can talk to him and listen to him accordingly. You know how, how our conversations adjust dep depending on the people we talk to, right? If we talk to a colleague, we talk differently, right? Maybe at work. When you talk to an office mate, it's different. When you talk to your boss, how do you talk to your boss? Sir, right? It's like there's, there's that, that air of humility right away because, you know, he's different. So how, how well we know people, how intimate we are with people affects the way we, we, we relate with them or communicate with them. And so if you don't know who God is or who you're talking to, that will affect your prayer life. That's why we need to know who God is. Now, if you know God only to be a, a, a just God, right, that if you do something, then there, there's, 
uh, uh, exacting of payment for what you did, then you will approach him in fear. I'm not saying don't ap ap approach him in fear. We have to fear God. But that's not the complete side of God. There's a side of God that is gracious. But if it's all grace, oh, you know what? I said, okay, lang, God will forgive me. But we don't understand the just side of God. So we have to understand who we're talking to, every part of him. And the way we do that is we got to turn to his word and we got to commune with him in prayer. And as we constantly communicate with him in prayer, then we get to know him more and more. Right? Pray focusing on who God is. And then it says, so know who you're talking to, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Now prayer now, prayer is not just about um, um, asking for the things that you want. It's not about that. Prayer is about honoring and glorifying God. The mere act of prayer is saying, Lord, again, you are God and I am not. And that is a, a mere act of honoring. The fact that you are praying to God is saying, Lord, I am depending on you. You are above me. And that is attributing honor to him. Our first goal in prayer is to worship him. Hallowed be your name. Your name be above all, all names. You are above me. Next is pray for his kingdom to come. So our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then we are to pray for his kingdom to come and his will be done. Matthew 6 10 says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What kind of kingdom was, was Jesus talking about? Was it a geographical kingdom that you can take a plane and then you'll get there? Oh, this is the kingdom of God. No, he wasn't talking about, about um, a geographical kingdom. Jesus was talking about uh, a, a, a sovereign state of, of, of God. Uh, uh, in control God being the king of this kingdom and that is the ideal state your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven the goal is whatever is happening in heaven how how um, how obedient and 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 how much peace there is in heaven it, that should be reflected here on earth but is it already the reflection of that no right it's not happening because if it is then there's no need to pray for that right because the truth is, God, God created everything, but the Bible says that the ruler of this world are, is, is Satan and his minions. But there will come a time that Jesus will come back and reclaim this kingdom. Right? But we are to pray for that. We are to pray of, of, of that sovereign state where God is king. God is king. And we all have allegiance to him. So this is the prayer. So first, pray to glorify God, hallowed be thy name, and then pray for his kingdom to come and his will be done. How it is done there, I hope that is, that is how it's done here. Pray for his kingdom to come and his will be done. Now, the next line is to pray for God's provision. Verse 11, give us today our daily bread. Daily bread is symbolic of all our physical needs, right? Provisions, financial, physical, food. Jesus is teaching us to pray for day-by-day -day provision. Somebody said, um, our speaker yesterday said his prayer is this. He would say, Lord, give me, do not give me so much that I will forget you, but don't give me so little that I will be discouraged. Give me just enough. Right? Daily dependence on God. And sometimes the problem is, you know, when, when, when we have so much, we tend to forget about God. Right? We tend to become self-dependent. You know, a parable, of, parable in the Bible that was shared was a parable of the rich fool. He was so dependent. He had so much, and he forgot about the things of God. I have so much. Eat, drink, and be merry. That, that was his motto. But Jesus was teaching us to depend on God day by day for all our needs. Pray for God's provision. Pray for spiritual protection and guidance. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 
the reality is we are not just against flesh and blood. Why do we need to pray? Because Satan is at work. The, spir the spiritual realm is real. And that's why all the more we need to pray. Pray for spiritual protection and guidance. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. You know, the Bible tells us that Satan is like a roaring lion ready to devour. Have you ever seen a lion hunt? What would the lion do? Does it, does it announce its presence right away? Hey, I'm here. I'm going to get you. I don't think that's how a lion hunts, right? A lion would silently creep. Strategically, they would, they would hunt in packs. And then do they target the strongest ones? No, they would target the weak ones. Those who do not pray. <laughs> the buffaloes who do not pray. Or the, 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 the weak ones, the, 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 the young ones, or the sick ones, right? And they would isolate this, 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 this buffalo and they would pounce on them. And you know, when we are weak, when we, we are not dependent on God, and, 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 and we are living on our own strength, and our strength is limited, and we are just target prey for the devil. And that's why we need to pray, Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And finally, pray for forgiveness and also forgive others. He says, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Matthew 6, 12. Matthew 6, 14 says, For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. How can we ask God to forgive us when we do not forgive others? Right? Uh, do, do you remember the story of the unmerciful servant? Where this, was, where, where this person owed the king so much? And he was forgiven, and yet he did not forgive those who owed him. And so he was thrown into prison, right? Because what he was asking from God is, is not the same thing he was giving others. And so this verse is saying, if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. And so when we, when we ask, when we ask uh, God... Our posture, when we ask forgiveness, have you ever seen anyone ask for forgiveness na mayabang? Patawarin mo ako, ha? Right? No. It, well, somebody may do that, right? But do you think they're sincere? No, they're not. You see, when we ask for forgiveness, our heart should be that, a post, that of a posture of humility. Right? When we ask for forgiveness, you know, I really did wrong. I'm, I'm so sorry. And how could that be when, when, when we, we feel that humility that we are not able to, to forgive others? Wala namang humility sa iba. And so when, when we ask God for, for forgiveness, we say, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lord, forgive me. And maybe you can pray, Lord, if there is anyone that I have wronged or somebody who have wronged me, help me to forgive that person also. Now, all of these you will discuss in your small groups, but let me end with this, with this story. Do you know the, the, the song, uh, What a Friend We Have in Jesus? What a Friend We Have in Jesus, right? And uh, the story behind that song is this song was written by Joseph Scriven. Joseph Scriven, he was Irish-born. Now, the story of uh, Joseph is he was engaged to be married. He was 25 years old. He was engaged to be married. And the day before his marriage, his fiancée drowned. The day before the wedding, his fiancée drowned. And so, you know, he, he was heartbroken and, and, and he, moved. He, moved, uh, he moved to Canada to teach. And then he, he met um, a relative of a student, and he got engaged again. And then before the wedding, the fiancé died again. That's the story. I, I don't know, you know? Talagang single blessedness talaga, no? So, so this, this guy, heartbroken, and um, um, did not marry anymore, committed his life to be a preacher. 
And then uh, many years after, a friend of, uh, of, of him was going through the poems that he wrote. But during that time that his girlfriend, the, se the second fiance was sick, uh, was, was dying, the mother, his mother, was gravely ill. But he was so far away, so he wrote a poem. What a friend we have in Jesus sent, his, sent it to his mother. And many years after, his friend was reading his poems and saw this, and his friend made it into a song. And we have what a friend we have in Jesus. And this is, again, I will not sing. I don't want to destroy your mood. But it says this, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. I love it. Prayer is a privilege. It's not a duty. Wow, have you ever spoken to the president of the Philippines? If you are ever able to, granted that you like him, okay? Uh, if, 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 if you get to speak to him, is that a privilege? Wow. You know, did you attend GDC, Global Discipleship uh, Congress? I was able to introduce the president. You know, I, I made a voiceover, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Philippines. And so, wow, it was a privilege for me. And so I was sharing to my friend, you know, wow, what a privilege. And then my friend approached me and said, well, you know, Omar, every day we get to introduce the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What a greater privilege, right? What a greater privilege. I would just complete, I would just read, read the, 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 the lyrics all the way down and we'll close. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise, forsake you? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield you. You will find a solace there. Blessed Savior, thou hast promised, thou with all our burdens bear. May we ever, Lord, be bringing all to thee in earnest prayer. Soon in glory, bright and clouded there, will be no need for prayer. Rapture, praise, and endless worship will be our sweet portion there. Thank you so much. Let's all close in prayer and uh, we can have our group time. Father, we thank you so much for reminding us that we can come to you, Lord God, in prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you have torn the veil, that we may have direct access to you through your son, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you would all give us the grace to live a life of prayer. Lord, that we would always depend on you that we would always commune with you, that we would speak with you and listen to you more importantly. And Father, as you speak to us, that we would apply all these things that we heard from you in our lives. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everyone.